today we have something special okay so we did the poll uh we got the orcs and now we're doing the world eaters because they were next on the list so today we're going to be learning about the world eaters from an australian man very exotic <laughs> i'm excited so let's get into it holy titty jizzle i am excited for this video long time viewers of this channel know that the extent of my humor used to be how many times i could say cunt in one sentence and while that version of major kill has a special so there's there's gonna be a lot of cursing in this, just so you know. Place in my heart, he was an autistic little shit, and he had to be put down. <laughs> but we're bringing him back. Only the autistic rage of an unfunny tryhard edgelord major kill could possibly hope to do justice to the world eaters, angry, roided, sexually frustrated super soldiers who have nails in their brains. In my opinion, nails in their brains. What the hell is that about? Why would you put nails in your brain? Yeah. In Angrond, and by extension his legion, should be the Imperium's galaxy-wide example of why abortion should be legalized, as in a universe full of advanced tactics, heavy gunfire, and military discipline, a bunch of angry boys are somehow able to overcome it all, using just chain axes and the power of plot armor infused rage. More on that later. Today we'll cover who the World Eaters are and where they come from. We'll also take a deep dive at their Primarch Angrond and why he's actually angry beyond being in a constant state of brain-nailed rapage. Oh yeah, I need to learn more why his name is Angrond and he's super angry. <laughs> Apparently he might have nails in his head too, it looks like from the picture there. Let's get into it. When the Big E decided he wanted to clap the galaxy's cheeks, he created 20 overpowered as shit demigod children called Primarchs. This guy is just out there with his, you know, clapping cheeks and stuff. Using some 80s era I really like this collage here. I really do. How many do we got? Uh, 6, 12. Hmm. That one in the corner, the bottom right, there's two faces in that one. That must be, uh, the Alpha Legion. Cum wipes. The four gods of chaos did not want to get their cheeks clapped, well, maybe other than Slanesh, and decided to yeet the baby Primarchs across the galaxy using warp fuckery and the Big E's wife. Despite this setback, the god emperor of mankind used the DNA of his Primarchs to create 20 legions of super soldiers space marines. The 13th legion were a group of hard warriors who acted as shock troopers designed to massacre the enemy. These warriors were called the Warhounds. Before the discovery of their- Warhounds. Oh, okay, so they started out as the Warhounds, and then they became the World Eaters a little long. Oh, a little later. Okay. I Primark, get it. the Warhounds did not really get much of a spotlight on them, beyond being known for their savagery and all around cuntiness. This just got worse when they found their Primark. <laughs> One of the Primarchs that got yeeted was Angron, and he landed on a shitty slave-infested planet of Nekria. Now even from a childhood, Angron was an absolute creature, and he killed an elder squad that attacked him just as he crawled out of his landing capsule, only to be captured by a group of slavers. So yeah, rough start, but not that bad compared to people like Motarian who landed on a planet that had cancer and his dad was a necromancer, or Lehman who got raised by wolves. Angron was forced to fight in the Nucrea gladiatorial arenas, and obviously wrecked everyone's tits. He- <laughs> So- yeah, you've already figured out that this Australian man, he likes to curse a lot. Wrecking tits. That's a thing I've never heard before. <laughs> um, Angron, captured as a baby or a little young man. How? How? What? So they're... I'm assuming they can grow up really fast, right? So he grew up really fast. Was he an adult, like a full-fledged adult when he killed these people, or was he a child? I'm confused. And then he was also, like, uh, taken by slavers. So, was he going to be fighting somewhere? Because, I... Let's figure this out. He gained a lot of fame in that arena, and even found a father figure to guide him. But he wasn't too keen on the whole slave situation, and tried to escape a number of times. Each time he got his ass kicked, because Angron is the worst Primarch ever. 
<laughs> Corvus had a very similar upbringing and he didn't get captured. Hell, Conrad even crash landed into his planet's crust, crawled his way through lava, and then had to hide from all the rapists and he still became king of the planet. Anywho, after clapping in Ogren's cheeks, the lords of Nicrea ordered Angren to kill his daddy, and Angren was like, no, fuck off. So instead they shoved danger nails into his brain, which basically upped his aggression times 10 and made him a berserker. See, each Primarch was- Okay, so he get nail. He has the nails in his head too. What a horrible existence that sounds like. Just having nails in your head. You're supposed to embody one or more of the Emperor's characteristics. And before the nails, Angron was a man of honor and empathy. He literally had an ability to take away other people's pain and discomfort. So it no. looked like he got specked into a support role from the start. But then he got an account bound item that forced him to build into DPS. A lot of people say this was the tragedy of Angron, the only Primarch who was not able to be who he was meant to be, but I say the shit cunt deserved it. Any other Primarch would have gotten out of that situation except for Angron. Guess those empathy powers suck, eh, Angron? After his brain got nailed, Angron killed his daddy in a blind rage, and when he chilled out, he was pretty sad, and vowed, probably for the 500th time, that he would escape and kill the new Korean lords. Well, after a bunch more failed escapes, Angron united the gladiators of the arena and they staged another escape, this time finally managing it with 2,000 gladiators escaping under his command. This army was fierce as fuck, and they killed dozens of thousands of Nucrean soldiers, however eventually they were only down to 1,000 and were surrounded by 7 armies. It was at this time Daddy E, who had been watching the whole affair for some time, beamed down was like, what up son, you are going to die tomorrow if you do not come with me. What up, son? <laughs> well, I mean, this is a great way to learn lore by an Australian man cursing a bunch and, and making shit up as he goes. It's pretty great. <laughs> and Angron was like, Fuck off, Dad, I'm not a kid anymore! And chose to remain with his warriors to die with honor. The biggie got salty and then left. He then went on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and was given his next question. How should I go about recruiting my son into the Great Crusade and securing his loyalty? Do I A. Extract him and his army to safety using my teleporters B. Bomb the shit out of the evil Nucrean lords C. Bring a force of custodies and warhounds down to the surface to fight side by side with my son in glorious combat Or D. Teleport my son onto the ship, let all his warriors get massacred and then offer his slave as a place within the Imperium of Man well, the Big E being a bit of a mean- I'm guessing it would be D. <laughs> Lord went with option D and he yeah. beamed Angron up. Angron wasn't super keen on this and he killed a Custodes, but then got mind raped by the- killed a Custodes? Okay. I've heard that uh, Custodes are much more badass than Primarchs, Space Marines, anything. So he killed one? That's a little intense. Big E and knocked out. When he questioned his father why he couldn't have just saved his people, the Big E was like, Bro, those backward slavery peasants can eat my ass. Stop being such a pussy. Now go take your marines and kick some- They can eat my ass. <laughs> Major kill, what the hell? People. Angron went to his room and started sulking. Whenever a warhound approached him, he would kill their ass until one day Khan, yes the Khan we all love, went in and fought his Primarch. He got his ass kicked, but Angron respected him for it, so he finally decided to put on his daddy shoes and be the Primarch his marines needed, renaming the Legion to the World Eaters. Except life was way better for the World Eaters before Angron came, meaning they had become the only Legion who negatively benefited off the retrieval of their Primarch. They also inherited the only Primarch who couldn't conquer his planet, so that's a record they aren't super stoked about. Before Angron was given his legion, however, the Big E was slightly concerned about the whole Angon Nails situation, hence booked him in for an MII scan. It was revealed that the Butcher Nails had been specifically designed for humans and were extremely incompatible with Primarchs. As such, the Nails had been extremely crudely put into the brain and basically destroyed any sense of pleasure Angron could have had other than in battle. Parts of his brain had been removed and replaced with the Nails and in a few years, Angron would die an agonizing death. So this makes another record for Angrind, the only Primarch who was dying of brain cancer. <laughs> now I don't know if the Big E just didn't give a fuck or if he genuinely enjoyed messing with Angron, but despite being able to remove the nails, 
The Big E didn't, as it would leave Angron in a lobotomized state or it would take too long. Hence he was like fuck it, and sent Angron back to his legion as he was considered well enough to take part in the crusade. Obviously by this- But if he only had a few years to live, wouldn't you try to save him? That's a little weird that he wouldn't try to save him. At this point, Angron had really shed his support class and up taking the mantle of being a total dick to his sons. Hence, the first thing he did was attempt to recreate the nails to put into the World Eater's brains. However, once again, he failed, as none of the attempts ended in anything but death. For now. The World Eaters ate their shit out of some worlds as they tore across the galaxy, scoring the lowest amount of peaceful Imperial compliances and highest amounts of genocide. Angra never fought for the Great Crusade and instead just enjoyed non-stop battle, so the Imperium generally aimed to send the World Eaters into places where they knew there was only war, so they could be used effectively. It was due to how effective they were in battle, it was why they got away with all their war crimes. Eventually everything came to a head. You know, probably a legion called the World Eaters, probably going to have a lot of uh, war crimes, just putting it out there, so the <laughs> Emperor should have known that. Don't send these guys to like nice places to go conquer, send them to the hellholes. <laughs> when they invaded a rebelling advanced world, the world eaters were given 31 hours by their Primarch to conquer the planet, however were met with significant opposition and were forced to withdraw. Their Primarch then ordered 10% of the legion to be murdered by the other 90% as a stupid ass punishment. The world eater cap- He, it sounds like Angron does not give a shit about anybody but himself and fighting. He just killed 10% after they lost. He killed 10% of their legion. And replied, listen here you senile angry old shit. No one is killing anyone, okay? The planet cannot be taken in 31 hours. Stop being an asshole. <laughs> to which Angon replied, are you sure no one is killing anyone? Before he began attempting to solo kill his own legion. Only through the combined effort of a number of World Eater Psychers who gave their lives were they eventually able to knock Angron out, making Angron the first Primarch to get his ass kicked by his own sons. He's really racking up the shit cunt trophies here, is he? He doesn't seem to be very good at being a, a Primarch. Just, just putting that out there. Angron sounds like he can't really hang. And then at least uh, Conrad, he took over his whole planet. He did it really brutally and scary and flayed a lot of people but he did it <laughs> angron can't even seem to catch a break i mean no. it was at this time that some world eaters figured out how to make a crude but working version of the butcher's nails now not all the world eaters were keen on brain cancer that mutated all their serotonin and put them in constant agony hence there was a bit of a civil war that occurred between the world eaters with oh. khan being the one to end it by killing the very world eater who defied angron's purge order the world eaters began receiving their nails as this occurred the imperium found out about the nails as well as the world eaters gone full overboard in killing everyone hence they sent Liam and Russ to bring angron back to terra for judgment now, I don't really know why the Emperor kept sending Lehman to go talk to wayward Primarchs and try to bring them home peacefully, like Lehman was really shit at it. He completely <laughs> fucked it up with Magnus, and once again he fucked it up here. I don't know Lehman the story, arrived and I was do like, not know the story behind Lehman, obviously. Uh, I'm excited to learn. He might, well, I'm gonna have to put up a poll here and uh, we'll figure out where we're gonna go next. But... <laughs> Sounds like he doesn't have a great track record either in talking to his brothers. Yo bro, I know you are a warlike man who never surrenders, but you must surrender and come with me peacefully. This obviously resulted in the first Astartes on Astartes battle that took place in the galaxy, as Space Wars and World Eaters tore each other apart. Lehman and Angron engaged in a fierce battle and beat the shit out of each other, however eventually Angron knocked Lehman on his ass and had the upper hand. But then, he didn't. Lehman the Sly Dog had baited Angron into a kill zone. He was surrounded by wolves holding guns that would blow him into shreds in seconds. Despite the World Eaters' fury in combat, and that they were actually winning in terms of kill count, they had no strategy and their Primarch was at Lehman's mercy. Yeah, it seems like he was half the bottomized anyway, so there's not going to be a whole lot of strategy. It's all going to be berserk rage. So that makes sense that he would lose quite a bit to people who could out-strategize. Um, God, that would suck just having nails in your head that's killing you slowly and you can't feel anything but anger. 
Gypsy. Ugh. Now Lehman should have grown some balls and hit the abortion button to finally do to anger on what should have been done before he was born, <laughs> but instead he couldn't bring himself to do it and he retreated, unable to kill his brother, and leaving anger to be a smug asshole, thinking he had won that one. There's actually a really cool conversation from the book Betrayer between Lorgar and Angron, where Lorgar basically spells out to Angron how pathetic he is and how Lehman stomped his ass in that battle due to his tactically brilliant move, whilst Angron insists he won because the World Eaters killed more Space Wolves. It also shows how little the World Eaters cared for Angron, as the majority of them did not even notice he was in danger and the many that did, didn't give a shit. <laughs> After that incident, Angron continued his own crusade His own sons don't like him. Well, he's kind of a... He's actually not kind of he is a dick i mean killing him his own people just because they didn't take the hour or take a planet in 31 hours you're out of your mind out of your mind and then he's like i'm gonna kill 10 percent of you and then i want to shove nails in your brains just so you can be as mean and angry and horrible as i am what a life <laughs> i would not want to be in the world eaters legion at all blood across the galaxy, until the Emperor was like, for fuck's sake, Horus, bring Angron to me so I can abort him once and for all. <laughs> However, Horus, being the bold cunt he was, had already fallen to chaos, and instead manipulated Angron into joining his rebellion. Not that he needed much manipulating, Angron was super keen for the chance to bring down his father. The Istvan atrocity occurs where all the traitor legions attempt to purge himself of any unloyal to the Emperor, and Angron hates all the loyalists so much at this point that he personally leads the charge to kill the survivors of the massacre, despite Horus advising against it. Once again, Angron proves himself to be a dipshit without any tactics, as it took months to wipe out all the loyalists and allowed time for word of what happened to get back to Terra. After following Dropsite Massacre, Angron went off with Lorga to go kick some blue ass and attacked Ultramar. They burnt a bunch of worlds, one of which resulted in Angron getting nearly killed due to him being an idiot and getting a building collapsed on him. Oh my God. After clawing out of the rubble, he then holds up a Warhound Titan's foot to prevent- So I, uh, this is just kind of a side note. So, been listening to the Horus Heresy. I was, I'm already past the in uh, what is it called again? So essentially they had started the Istvan, er, Istvan. Isvan tragedy or whatever the hell they called it. So, yeah, Angron had a mountain in that one. Like, a mountain crashed on him and he woke up, like, pulled himself out of there after everybody had just said, we're done fighting, we're done all this. He got up and started massacring the people that had actually surrendered. <laughs> just straight up just killed everybody plus he also um somebody also killed another like loyalist uh space marine <laughs> or a gen no he was a general it doesn't matter it's an interesting thing he's uh angron sucks <laughs> it's a cool cool lore but he kind of he does sound like he sucks pretty bad different killing lorga so yeah, leave it to the two shittest Primarchs to nearly die on some random planet by some random no-name characters. As this Shadow Crusade continued, Lorgar watched anger and rapidly begin to deteriorate. I mean, if it was even possible to deteriorate from where he was currently from. And he realized Angron was soon going to die. He took Angron to Nakria, where they went to go see if there was some way to prevent this. Here's the funniest part. When they arrived, Angron was told by the Nucrean nobles that the legend of Angron ends with Angron running away like a coward on the final day before the battle, hence he was known as the planet's biggest pussy for hundreds of years. Angron <laughs> responded by genociding the entire planet of all life, so absolutely no one would know that version of his origins. Whilst he was doing this, the Ultramarines arrived with Gullyman to get revenge for Lorgar's Ultramarine shenanigans, and the word bearers are getting their asses kicked until Angron arrives, fights Gullyman, has like 10 seizures, and then Lorgar turns him into a demon prince. The first thing Angron does after ascending is kill all of his world eater psychers, which is kind of stupid considering how many times they had saved him. Wow. But I guess when you have a batshit crazy brain aids demon primarch, they don't seem to think about things in a reasonable order. So he straight up became a demon just to like not die. <laughs> he said that he had 10 seizures, which I'm assuming is not 100% accurate. Because we're listening to an Australian, an Australian man 
tell us about this, but so he was dying and then Lorgar, uh, turned him into a demon prince. And then he went on to kill all of his like <laughs> right then and there. Either way, the process oh. had doomed Angron's soul, but saved his life. Now, before we get to the Siege of Terror, I want to talk about Khan for a bit. The story of Khan is a bit more tragic than Angron. Khan began as a space marine who stood up to Angron and showed him the strength of the World Eaters. He stood by his Primarch's side and willingly accepted the Butcher's nails to become closer to him. He was the first marine to receive them. Time and time again, he chose the side of his Primarch despite knowing it was all going to shit. He even was best bros with the word bearer Yargul Tal, who despite being evil was actually quite likable. So it was pretty awesome when after Erebus betrayed That's some really cool artwork right there. and killed Argul, Khan challenged him to a duel. And boy oh boy did Erebus get his pedophilic ass stomped. Khan was relentless as he hacked pieces of Erebus off. Erebus was re left a ruined mess after only a few moments, but got teleported out of there like the pussy he was. Fuck Erebus. I really like listening to lore by this Australian man. There's a lot of cursing. <laughs> and he called somebody a pedophile? Uh, Erebus. He's the one who at least started. He helped start the Horus Heresy. I know that name from that. Turns out it was even more possible for Angron to get angry now, as he had the essence of corn in him as he just bounced around the galaxy killing everything he could find. He completely ignored Horus's orders, hence Pertrabo was sent to bring him in. Now Angron was a powered up demon Primarch, and Pertrabo- That's another, uh, I don't know, Pertrabo, I can't remember, is it the Iron Hands? Should he be next in the lore? Let me know in the comments. Or should we continue on with something else? I was kind of debating, I'm going to put up a poll, but kind of uh, debating the Ultramarines and or something else in between all that we'll we'll get some polls going and then we'll we'll figure out where we're going after this Petrabo was yet just you know Petrabo yet Angron once again got his ass kicked due to having zero concept of tactics he was then thrown into a box and unleashed upon Terra when the time was right the siege of Terra wasn't kind to Angron or the world eaters as Angron got his ass kicked like 10 times Half of those was him just attempting to breach the Emperor's psychic barrier, only for the Emperor to just swat him away. Another time he was blown to shreds by gunfire and had to be reforged by corn. and if the theories are true, sounds like Sanguinius is going to kick his ass in the coming Horus Heresy novels as well. The World Eaters fought hard, but their only core cool character left at this point was Khan, who despite racking up a massive kill count, got his ass blasted and spent the rest of the siege in a coma. Emperor fights Horus, Horus dies, Emperor becomes a vegetable, and Angron fucks off. <laughs> now whilst the legions such as the word bearers, death guard, and iron warriors remained intact and cohesive, others like the Emperor's children, night lords, and world eaters had all lost their minds and split up. See the world eaters were berserkers before corn was a thing in their lives, plus the longer you have the nails, the worse it gets. So by this point all you had was drooling insane meat sacks who just wanted to fight shit. However it turns out the key to overcoming the nails isn't more violence, it's just mindfulness and meditation. The nails bite your brain when you attempt to have a good happy peaceful time or joy, and give you a pleasant rush when your brain experiences exhilaration. However, if you were able to maintain control, you would be able to control the nails, which is what some world eaters have actually managed to do. Khan completed his fall to insanity when a battle on a planet got That is amazing artwork right there. Really cold, so all the world eaters went to hunker down and weather out the storm. The Khan thought this was a pussy bitch move, so he decided to kill all the world eaters on the planet and ascend to become the avatar of Khorne. The World Eaters no longer have an army, but are scattered throughout various Trader Moon warbands and act as a specialist troop, likely making the World Eaters the smallest of all the Space Marine legions still around. Another record for them. Angron would go on to try and be a nuisance and invade the Imperium, however after he was beaten back, 90% of the territory had That artwork is crazy intricate. I thought that was Horus in the original time that I saw that, but that's Angron. It makes sense. He's got the nails. They're kind of small in this picture, but man, these Took guys can't get taken break. back off him. And then he got his ass kicked and his sword broken during the first War of Armageddon. Nice one, Angron. The issue with the World Eaters is that the writers have written like themselves into a corner. 
Angron has the personality of an autistic kid on speed, especially since becoming a demon, so there's not much interesting happening there with his character, whilst the rest of the Legion are mostly just mindless berserkers. The World Eaters excel when they try to do the right honourable thing and have to mentally fight through the nails to do it, however with Korn's dick 10 inches up all their asses, that's pretty rare. There is a World Eater who aids Fabius Byrle who is a chilled out guy because of all this meditation, but he's an exception not the rule. It seems like for now at least the World Eaters are just pulled out when the plot needs some hardcore close quarter combat, or Angra needs to get his ass kicked for the hundredth time. And that does us for today guys. The Lord Wow, major kill. Major kill. Okay, so that was uh, World Eaters by Major Kill. Uh, I think it would blow pretty bad to be part of the World Eaters. Angron sucks. <laughs> just from what I just saw, I haven't really, you know, delved too deep into his lore yet. We're getting there, but just from the overview that Major Kill just gave, it sounds like he sucks a lot. I don't want fucking nails in my head. I don't want to do that. Let me go uh, hang out with Conrad being creepy in the dark shadows. Or, um, shit, it, I'd hang, even hang out with the traitor legions. Uh, Horus. They're the Black Legion now. The Sons of Horus. There we are. <laughs> I want to hang out with them. I don't know. Angron. It sounds like he's kind of a one-dimensional character now, especially with um, him being a demon and the World Eaters being a demon, like demon spawn too. And it, it sounds like there also isn't a whole lot of them anymore. So they're kind of specialized, like uh, so, sort of like the Night Lords. How uh, the Night Lords are very much uh, splintered off now, being mercenaries, whatever, because they don't have a Primarch to lead them anymore, right? Well, that was them. <laughs> we'll catch you in the next one. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Major Kill, all of his stuff will be in the description as well. Have a great day.